Addiction is a disease of, of what organ? And you guys know this, right? It's the brain. Addiction is a disease of the brain. So this is my rendition of the brain. I have better slides coming. But that's a cross-section through the human brain. It's not a buttocks like somebody might like to say. <laughs> or a Pac-Man or a, you know, I, I've heard. Would it be okay if I could play? Not be down, I suppose. So just a really quick anatomy lesson. There are three parts to the human brain. This is the cerebellum. Cerebellum is all about instincts. Breathing, heartbeat, temperature control, fluid balance, no conscious effort in the cerebellum. We can override the, the breathing by you know, deciding to, to breathe deep, but we're going to breathe whether or not we uh, think about it, which is good. If thinking, if breathing was in the thinking part of the brain, we'd be in pretty deep trouble. We'd be falling over left and right. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Oh my, look, there's a rock down there. So, the part of the brain that is cognitive, that thinks, that judges, that remembers, that weighs right and wrong, is really the human part of the brain. Animals, including your dog Jasper, do not have much of a frontal lobe. They're not thoughtful creatures, they're instinctive creatures. We humans decide, judge, weigh right and wrong, have morality, have some sort of spiritual nature, Animals are much more instinctive. Everybody, cat, dog, lovers, I think. Are here. <laughs> the part of the brain where addiction lies is here. It's called the midbrain, middle of the brain. Very complex organ system, but basically the midbrain is in charge of survival. But it's a little more sophisticated and higher level than the cerebellum. Cerebellum, if you cut a rat in two and, and looked at their brain, they had the same cerebellum as us. The midbrain looks pretty similar but has some differences. But what are the five functions that humans and animals have in common to survive? And we're talking about as an individual and as a species. So what are the, and we're not talking about breathing and heartbeat. So what are the five things to survive? Huh? Eating. Eating and drinking. Reproduction. Having, who said that? Judge. <laughs> we have to have sex. We have to eat and drink. What else? Shel shelter's nice. But shelter is pretty sophisticated. If you're out in the jungle and someone's attacking you, what do you got to do? Run or, or kick some fire. Or fight or flight is in there. You have to do this tonight or tomorrow night or the next night. Sooner or later, we have to fully have to rest, have to replenish. And then the last one is if you put your hand in a flame and you pull it out, you feel what? Pain. I'm going to talk about it this morning and night, but pain is really the circuitry that protects us from either injuring ourselves more or allows our, our injured limb or part of our body to heal. So these are the five functions that are involved in staying alive. In rats, this is, the, this is what it looks like. So rats, you know, they're hungry, they go get food. You got their food, they kill you. You know, if it's a male rat, he will do anything to get to a female rat and he to procreate his seed. And you know, the, the in, and this, these are impulses. This is eat, you know, screw, there's no making love in this. <laughs> this is an instant reptile rat brain. Alright, everybody there? Now, everybody here might have some of those impulses going on right now, but nobody's moving. Why? Is that? Because we direct our behavior from the front row. We override the impulse. You know, I'm getting a little hungry, but I'm not going for a sandwich until I'm done. So we can override the impulse. And that's our executive function in the frontal lobe. Now, this part of the brain is also developed in humans to the place where we feel emotion. So what are the emotions involved, for example, with fight or flight? Fear. Fear and anger. Those are the two. And of course, aggression and anxiety. So think about the last time you were afraid. Was your life in jeopardy? Probably not. I get afraid every time I give a talk. Nobody's ever even thrown a tomato at me, let alone threaten my life. But maybe won't laugh at my jokes. One time I, you know, I, zip, you know, just embarrassment. What you'll think of me? You know, real meaningless. 
stupid stuff. But we have emotions behind it. Anger. You know, somebody cuts me off. I want to go in front of them to tell them they cut me off. It has nothing to do with staying alive. Do you get what I'm saying? So the circuitry of the brain that's present in us to keep us alive is really sort of morphed into a whole lot of emotion that has nothing to do with survival. Same with eating. You know, if you're thinking about having a second sandwich after everything you've eaten, that's a good example. I mean, nobody could be hungry after that big, big meal, right? But some of us will go get a snack afterwards, you know. We're driven to, to, to eat in a way that's not terribly survival-based. Uh, yes? Right? You know, cookies. I mean, you know, I could eat a plate full of Last night, we had uh, gelato, and then I went back for more gelato, and I was already full. Now, what's that about? You know, that's a human drive that has nothing to do with survival. Sex, a little tricky to talk about, but if you're having sex, when's the last time you had sex to make a baby? You know, like hardly ever. <laughs> so if you're having sex, why else are you having sex? Huh? Oh, you guys don't have sex. Okay. So, no, seriously, why, why else would we do it besides uh, making babies? Enjoy it. It feels good. Thank you for being honest. Any other reason? Usually I get stress reduction. Exercise, <laughs> money, and, and then finally somebody will say it's about love, you know, it's about connection, jewelry, an honest woman. Thanks. But it's about connection, and but you know, the rat, that's not what that's about. The rat is get my seed, inseminate, you know, make more of this, this organism. That's the instinct. So, we as humans have much broader motivations than, than, than rats. Sleep, we go to sleep to rest, but we also go to sleep because we're depressed and to escape. Uh, and last is physical and emotional pain. Most forms of pain do not kill us. We're circuited to protect ourselves, but most of us survive with pain. Right? Back condition, I'm not dying from it. So this is the part of the brain where the drug works. It works through the neurotransmitter system. People familiar with dopamine and uh, serotonin and norepinephrine, but think about dopamine. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter that works in cells of the brain to cause things to happen. And it's really associated with drive and well-being. So when somebody is ready to fight, what's the neurotransmitter in the heart pounding in people's dilators? What's, what chemical is working? Adrenaline. Yeah, that's adrenaline. When somebody is threatened and feels powerful enough to kill somebody who's threatening us, that sense of elation and euphoria, that's dope. If you're a runner, if you get to that stage, that's dope. First bite of a hot fudge Sunday. Orgasm is, is dope. So anything pleasurable is associated with dope. Uh, Serotonin is more about moods. But here's the deal. Think about heart pounding, pupils dilated, on the alert, ready to run or fight. What drug does that sound like? Methamphetamine and cocaine. Stimulants. And what you need to know is it sounds like that because methamphetamine and cocaine hit the receptor site head on and they maximally stimulate dopamine. So we have this natural reward system that is now being co opted by a drug. And what happens is the drug works so well that it becomes number one. So it becomes more important than food, it becomes more important than sleep, and it becomes more important than you. My relationships pale in comparison to the drive to get this drug. And we're off and running. That's the disease of addiction. Because that drug works so good in my brain that I will do anything to get it. Not because I don't care, and I don't think about it, and I don't promise to do something different, and I don't feel bad after I've messed up but because it's not that frontal lobe that's driving my addiction. It's the rat brain that says, get me the drug, get it now. That's where I'm going Any questions about that or comments? Because that's really the sort of the key fact uh, that I want to impart. And we'll say a little bit more about that. OK. So we now have to find the fact that we have a disease that's based in the brain. And there's a differential way, because if I gave some of you in the room methamphetamine, most of you in the room methamphetamine, you would probably say, 
oh, you know, my heart's pounding and I have, feel an anxious and, you know, I'm awake and I can't sleep and I don't like this feeling, right? And then everyone, once in a while, would be, you know, go around the room and you'd say, ooh, <laughs> you know, this is kind of good because you get more dopamine than anything else. And there's a genetic predisposition to that phenomenon. People are born with different receptor sites. And we're getting pretty good at figuring this out from a neurobiological basis. We're not there yet. But it's pretty clear that the drug works in certain people's brains better than it does in other people's brains. The second is the environment, particularly stress, trauma, seems to activate parts of the brain that become damaged and then more responsive to the drugs that people end up becoming attached to. And some people, as you know, are attached to painkillers, and some people are attached to alcohol, and some people are attached to stimulants, and then we have garbage heads who can take any and all drugs that, that come across them. And then the last thing is the drug changes the 